Dr. Garcia, congratulations. I know that you were part of this uh, united effort in Brownsville to, to land SpaceX uh, in our community. And congratulations, first of all. Uh, now in, you know, you've got a changing role there with, with UT and an evolving role. Uh, let's, uh, without giving up too much, because I know this is still in, 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 in transit, uh, what do you foresee would be the UTB role uh, in the near future as we start launching rockets uh, from Brownsville? Well, thank you first for covering the story and for following it for so long because it's, it is an ever, excuse me, it's an ever evolving story and, and one that we just pick up on at the very earliest stages of it. I think the, the, the most important thing is what the region is going to benefit from. And now that we're going to have a regional university, um, industries like this that we can attract as a result of a community wide, region wide effort to recruit and attract and then nurture an industry uh, can, can reap exponential rewards. For the university, uh, UT Brownsville has, has been very much a part of thinking about how, once this decision was made, how our students might benefit um, SpaceX and how SpaceX and industries that are ancillary to it, that is, that grow up around trying to supply, for example, uh, things that they will need, uh, would be beneficial um, to, uh, to the university and vice versa. So, so we know that we have a program at our university in astrophysics. And 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 I'm and you talk about ten years ago and twenty years ago when we first started in the world of, of physics at, at the university, we had what we called 0.5 physicists. That means I had one professor who taught physics half time, and then he taught chemistry half time. Right? <laughs> Today we have 15 professors. Who are dedicated to, to the teaching of physics in a nationally recognized program? I don't think people understand the the gem, the jewel that you have there at UTB. Can you expand a bit more on that? That's right. Well, it is um, it, it's a it is a very important program for us because it is it's a program that looks at um, pulsars in space, and so it is gravitational wave astronomy, and it goes to the very core of of the theory uh, that tries to prove how time and distance react in space versus how they might react um, on Earth. And so we have students that now um, have been working with the, the Arecibo telescope in Puerto Rico for many years now, one of the largest uh, radio telescopes in the world. And our students in our own mini uh, lab are able to the telescope in Puerto Rico, which means they can control the search for pulsars in the world. And our students have been responsible um, for the, over the last five years in discovering pulsars and, and have been the ones most prolific in that worldwide. So what started out as a local interest in science has become now an international uh, centerpiece for the study of gravitational wave astronomy. Well, did, did our astrophysics program... <clears throat> provide a um, a delicious lure in, in some some regard uh, for Elon Musk did, did, did he was he attracted to that program did, was he aware of that program you know we will never take all credit for it because that would not be fair it would not be <laughs> accurate <clears throat> but I but but just like you look at geography which is one of the reasons that they looked for a place southernmost in the United States um, because of the the you know, uh, issues when you Another thing that you would look at that is a human capital that's available to support such an industry. And people don't want to import everything. They want to be able to use um, the, the, the native assets of a community. And so when, if when uh, SpaceX came down to do one of its preliminary hearings to determine whether they themselves wanted to pursue this project long term, um, they had lots of people to love to testify. And one of the last series of folks that, that testified were students from our astrophysics department. And so as our students got up to testify, the SpaceX engineers were clearly in awe that, that there was this very young, knowledgeable um, um, group of students here in Brownsville and who were able to, to, um, to talk to them about these same issues that they were interested in in space. And so they asked them, he said, where are you all from? And the students said, we're from UT Brownsville. And they said, what's UT Brownsville? <laughs> so they said, we want to come to our lab. And so after the 
SpaceX uh, engineers, there were several of them, went over to our lab with our students and spent the next four or five hours wow. in kind of a geek moment, right, as they yeah. all talked about things that most of us would not understand. And so from the very beginning, as SpaceX began to think about what site the pages for them, um, graphic would be a factor, sentence from the state were absolutely a factor. Yeah. But affiliating with a, a universe that already had a strength in this area and that was already producing um, students in astrophysics it was also an important part of it. So today, you Brown's produces in the nation, uh, the top in the top five universities, we produce the most uh, physics majors uh, produced in the United States in the top five that is grouping. Amazing. Yeah, that is so amazing. that's an extraordinary lore, yeah, I think, yeah. as you say. Uh, our guest right now on 710K URV w- with reaction to space exploration technologies, SpaceX, and their announcement today. Um, marking uh, and creating this very historic day for the Rio Grande Valley, making us Spaceport USA. That's right, the first privately run commercial launch complex. It's coming. It's official. We are it. We're Rocket Town USA. SpaceX is coming to the Rio Grande Valley and going to be building a rocket launch complex at Boca Chica Beach. And we're speaking with Juliet V. Garcia, uh, the former president of University of Texas at Brownsville and had been very active for many, many months in those couple of years uh, that it took to lure uh, SpaceX to deep south Texas. Uh, Now, it seems that we might need to create a pipeline, Dr. Garcia, uh, of certain graduates in order to to meet the demand of of this fledgling industry that uh, seems to have plenty of of work waiting for it. Uh, It seems that we, you know, Carl said that uh, the reports uh, state that we need to launch, like, or uh, SpaceX plans to launch uh, 12 times a year, at least once a month. That sounds like a pretty hefty schedule to me. And with the potential of, of maybe manufacturing some of these heavier lift rockets in our area, that, that sounds to me like a lot of jobs, and we're going to need to churn these people out to, to meet the demand. Uh, we up, are we up to speed? Are we up to the challenge? I don't think we're there yet, obviously, but I think the potential to be there with, as SpaceX grows, for us to also grow that pool of students, as you describe, um, is uh, is one that we're up to uh, to the challenge for. The university um, at UT Brownsville, UT Pan American, <clears throat> and all the schools in the in the valley, really, for for many years now, have been focusing on those STEM areas of science, technology, engineering uh, fields. And so everybody's effort together has begun to prepare a much larger pool of students that are ready for that. You you know that we started our own math and science academy about seven years ago where we take 11th and 12th graders and bring them onto campus at that age and then quickly move them into freshman and sophomore level courses. And then from the problem is they have to leave the area because now they're overqualified for the kind of industry yeah. that we have in the valley. Ten and we and we hope, yeah, we, we hope to... <clears throat> because they're producing these for ten four. I'd, I'd like to hear those numbers again about the number of uh, students that made the top uh, numbers in the country that came out of uh, how Brownsville. we rank when it comes yes, to how the, we rank uh, there. Of, of, of all of the, what I was saying, I'm sorry, I, admit, I didn't say it probably accurately. What, the, what it is, is if you look at where all of the, the most physics majors are being produced, Hispanic physics majors with baccalaureate degrees in the nation. We are now, UT Brownsville, the fifth largest producer of Hispanic physics baccalaureate majors in the nation. Okay, and hopefully uh, we'll be climbing that ladder uh, quite quickly. Well, that's right. Because now the... we have we have graduate degrees, and pretty soon, yeah, you can you can imagine a doctoral degree. But but the engineers at Pan American has been producing. They're also very instrumental to um, a, a, an industry like SpaceX. Unfortunately, many of them have been exported. Yeah. To industries in Texas and Houston, export your 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 talent, mm-hmm. then the community doesn't exponentially well look at the yeah look at the horizon (laughs) doctor (laughs) we've got um we got a medical school we'll be able to keep that talent and import talent and keep it here with a medical school uh we've got uh, so much potential on uh, when it comes to uh the fracking the liquefied natural gas and the the resurgence of that industry the expansion of the port uh trade with mexico with a super highway the 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 horizon is so bright and the future so bright right now 
uh, likely the uh, the most promising time uh, ever for our kids here in deep south Texas. Dr. Garcia, thank you for your time, and thank we'll you. keep in touch. That's uh, former president for the University of Texas at Brownsville, Dr. Juliet V. Garcia, our guest on 710K URV. Stick around. We continue with special coverage on this historic day. SpaceX is coming. SpaceX.